All right, David Kahn here. We've got another question bank question on topic 7.2, nuclear reactions. In this question, we have a possible fission reaction, and we want to state the value of x in the nuclear equation. Carefully looking at the nuclear equation, we can understand what x is, or what it represents. We start with an atom of uranium, and it absorbs a thermal neutron, becomes uranium-236 with the extra neutron, which then undergoes fission and splits into two daughter nuclei, krypton-92 and barium-141. In the process, an unknown number, that's the x, of extra neutrons are released. That's what we want to find out. Well, in a nuclear reaction, uh, the energy is what comes out, but the actual nucleons have to be the same. We have to have the same number of protons and the same number of neutrons on each side of the equation. So when we look at what we have here, we have 235 plus 1 on one side. That's 236. And on the other side, we have 92 plus 141 plus an unknown number of 1s. So that's 92 plus 141 plus an unknown number of 1s. 92 plus 141 gives us 233. So we have 236 on one side, 233 plus an unknown number on the other side. X must be 3. Next we're asked to show that the energy released when one uranium nucleus undergoes fission in the reaction, show that it's about 2.8 times 10 to the negative 11 joules. We're given the mass of all of the products and reactants in this equation. We have the neutron, uranium, krypton, and barium. So what we have to do is we have to first look at what we expect to have happen. We'll start with the mass of uranium and the mass of the neutron. Then we'll get, on the other side, the mass of krypton, the mass of barium, the mass of three neutrons, and there'll be a little bit of missing mass, the mass defect. There'll be less mass on the uh, product side. There'll be less mass because energy comes out of this fission process, and that energy comes from that missing mass. So we can create a balanced mass equation. We have the mass of uranium, 234.99333, plus the mass of the neutron, 1.00867. And on the other side, we have the mass of the krypton, 91.9. 0645 plus the mass of the barium 140.88354 and the mass of the three neutrons 1.00 Oh, it's 867, excuse me. And finally, the missing mass, the mass defect. So that looks like a disgusting equation, but actually, it's all just numbers. Number, 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 one variable. It's not too hard to punch it into your calculator and just solve for that mass defect. When I did that, I found that it was 0 0.186 AMU. Knowing the mass defect, we can convert it into, a, into an energy with the famous equation E equals MC squared. That mass is not in SI units, though. So we need to convert 1.186 AMU into kilograms by multiplying by the conversion 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms 
for AMU. Then we multiply by the speed of light squared, 3 times 10 to the eighth squared. You can punch that into your calculator as well, and you get 2.77 times 10 to the negative 11 joules, which is what we expected, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 11 joules. Coming down here, it says, state how the energy of the neutrons produced in the reaction in A is likely to compare with the energy of the neutron that initiated the reaction. So coming back up to A, There are neutrons on both sides of the reaction. There's one here, it initiated the reaction, and there's neutrons here. And the question asks us to compare the energy of these neutrons to that of the original neutron. And the answer is that the neutrons that come out of the reaction are going to be fast neutrons. They're going to be carrying a lot of kinetic energy because nuclear reactions are high energy reactions. The neutron that went into the reaction, on the other hand, has to be a slow thermal neutron. Only slow thermal neutrons can be absorbed by uranium-235. So the initial neutron was a low energy neutron. The resulting neutrons are going to be high energy neutrons, so their energy is going to be higher.